call the meeting to order uh, July 6. Um, could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, under God, in full, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, we got we have a lot of minutes to um, approve. Uh, Tom and Nancy, do you have all of your uh, the backup minutes, or do you have access to them? Yes, I've, this is Nancy. I've read through everything, and if we're able, I'm happy. I don't have any changes. If Tom doesn't have any changes, perhaps we could make one motion to approve all of them. I I'm fine with that. Personally. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I know it's a lot. Okay, so... Um, you want to make a motion to consider an act of hey, com uh, following minutes February 10th, 2020, yeah. March 20th, 2020, March 3rd, 2020, March 9th, 2020, March 16th, April 6th, April 27th, okay, May 18th, May 27th, June 1st, and June 15th. So moved. And Nancy, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? We did a lot of work. A lot yeah. of meetings. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item number four, reappointments. To hear and consider and act upon the following reappointments. Uh, Ethics Commission. This requires unanimous Board of Selectmen and RTM approval. Alex J. Trembecki. Uh, for a term of 720 to 722. Do I have a motion? This is Nancy. So moved. I'll second it. Does anyone have any discussion or comments? I'd it's just like to say thanks again for doing this. Well, thank, thank you. I, I hope you. I hope you vote to approve it. Uh, I've enjoyed my term, although I will say we don't meet very much. I guess we have a very ethical town. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, happy to be involved again. Happy to have you. And yeah, no, same. Just want to say thank you for, for throwing your hat in the ring yet again and um, look forward to working with you and thinking about ways how you can feel maybe even more engaged moving forward. Regardless of Thank how you. ethical our town is, I think we have opportunities to um, to talk and, and make what you guys do a little bit more robust. So looking forward. And I just want to say um, that I have known uh, Alex Trembecki for a very long time and that we actually served on uh, the RTM together. And actually, Alex, you were one of the original members of One Voice, if you remember. One Voice, that's right. I do remember. <laughs> Yes, and so um, we have a long history, and you have ha you have a long history of public service to our community, and I'm very glad that you uh, are stood up and, and are, are willing to, to serve another uh, term on the Ethics Commission. I can't imagine uh, anyone who is more helpful on this commission, and I appreciate your service to our community. Well, thank you very much. Well, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. And Aye. the motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Now, do I just hang up? Yes, you. you well, unless you want to stay for this riveting <laughs> Come meeting. Come on. Well, no. <laughs> you know, I'll watch it on fair TV. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, take care, Alex. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. And uh, the next item B, I am um, uh, pulling from the agenda, um, and for uh, a date um, un uh, that's not yet. Now, how do I make that? What do I say to a date? Not to be sure. Not taking action. Yes, not taking action. There we go. And next we have item number five. To hear, consider, and act upon the following appointments, A, uh, the Affordable Housing Committee, Carolyn M. Makeover of Noble yeah, Tribe. I'm, I'm on the line. I'm on the line. Hi, Carolyn. Uh, term Hi. for from 11-7-2020 uh, 
17 to 1121 to fill a vacancy for Walter J. Dunn, who resigned from the committee. Do I have a motion? So moved, this is Nancy. Thank you. Seconded. Any, any discussion or comment? Um, I'd like to make a comment if I could broadly and then specifically as I've had an opportunity to, to meet um, Carolyn Carey on a few occasions. Um, and broadly to say that, you know, I, I want to thank everybody who's stepped up in this volunteer way to um, participate on a board or commission because it really matters and it actually determines in our town how inclusive or how representative policy ideas are and um, really makes a case for some of the pressing issues we face. Affordable housing, obviously a very pressing issue. Um, it also serves as a, a check and balance to the different branches of, of the government. And, you know, therefore it's with the subject matter expertise and the seriousness with which I know that you personally, Carolyn, bring to the table. Um, you've been really involved in a long time and have been a participant um, as a citizen and now as a, a board member, I look forward to supporting you and wanted to say thank you and just um, reiterate the importance of, of these boards and serving. So um, I know it's a big time commitment. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, if you had a chance to look at my resume, I am a planner with a lot of experience, retired planner at the moment. Um, and uh, I hope I can bring a lot of uh, information and ideas to the board, to the commission, to the committee. Always getting them confused. Thank you so much for serving. And uh, Carolyn, uh, I would just like to thank you for um, stepping up to work on this committee. Uh, it is an important committee and it's a uh, Black woman Lefkowitz mentioned um, each of the committees that serve our community have the opportunity to delve into these issues in a much more deeper and broader way and bring that information to the broader community. So I really do appreciate you stepping up um, and serving in this role. I think this is one of the more important committees, obviously, facing our town and the many issues that we've uh, dealt with over the years. So I do thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I appreciate your your confidence in me. Okay. Well, um, if there's not any more discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations and thank you again, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you for thank calling you. in. Okay, the next uh, item is B, and it is an ethics commission which requires Board of Selectmen and RTM approval, and it is to appoint Nancy S. Billington of Fleming Lane to serve for the term 720 to 722 to fill a vacancy by Marguerite Toth, whose term expired. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Nancy. Second in Any discussion or comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll comment just to say that Nancy and I had a chance to chat. Um, we haven't met, although it's surprising because we we walk alongside people by the people that we know, we have mutual friends and look forward to working with you, Nancy, and, and just really appreciate that you're stepping up in this way and really appreciated some of the things we talked about, um, fairness, and um, kindness, and I know that you'll approach this work with an open mind and look forward to working with you. Thank you. I would, I would like to thank you for agreeing to serve. I appreciate the time and your commitment. Thank you, Tom. I'm on. So, well, we're honored to have you, and um, I have known Nancy for some time, and she has been an amazing member of our community and has dedicated herself in many different ways, and most notably through Inspire that has uh, been in our schools and in our community and has made a real significant difference in the areas of mental health. So I do appreciate your work um, with that, and I know that you will bring the same 
zest and commitment to serving our town in this capacity, and I really do appreciate you stepping up to serve. You're welcome. I am, I'll do my best. Well, thank you, Nancy. Well, if there's not any other discussion, uh, do I, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, and thank you again, Nancy. Thanks, Congratulations. Nancy. Our next Thank item, you. and you, you too, Nancy. If you want, unless you're interested in staying on the call, you're more than welcome to, to, uh, to hang up. <laughs> okay. All right. See you soon. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Our, our meetings are gripping. Stop driving down our attendance. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to start reading all those minutes. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Item number C, Fair TV Commission, requires unanimous Board of Selectmen and RTM approval. Patrick G. Hilligen of Ruane Street for a term 720 to 723. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. And I'll second it, Nancy. Any discussion or comment? Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm here. Uh, looking forward to getting involved in Fairfield uh, a bit more. Lived up here for three years now and enjoying uh, living here with my, my kids and looking forward to trying to help more. So thanks. Thank you. Um, my pleasure. Patrick, um, we had a chance, this is Nancy, we had a chance to speak earlier today and was just impressed with your enthusiasm and your willingness to step in as a fairly new resident to Fairfield. I think it's great that you are approaching this with an open mind and um, recognize the ability to, to face the work with kind of a, a bipartisan spirit and, with an, again, with an open mind and, and just really doing what's in the best interest to uh, represent a fair and balanced uh, perspective, and I really appreciated that. So, welcome and thank you very much for your willingness to Thanks. serve. Thanks so much, 100%. Best of luck to you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you stepping up, Patrick, uh, to serve on this commission. We've we've actually had difficulty filling this commission over the years, so I particularly uh, appreciate your willingness to serve, and we look forward to working with you in the uh, term ahead. So. Thank you, and I appreciate your service to our community. Thanks, Brenda. It's my pleasure. Well, for having no further comment, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you again. Thanks, Brenda, so much. Thanks, all. All right. All right, Patrick. Have a great night. And, okay, you too. Take well. care. Thanks. Item number six, appointment to hear, consider, and approve the following appointment as recommended by the Board of Library Trustees. Andrew Minia of Penfield Road, term 720 to 726, to fill a vacancy for Sonal Regin, whose term expired. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is Nancy, and I'll second it. It's Nancy. Any discussion or comment? Well, first of all, I'd like to um, say thank you for serving on the library board. It's a very important board in town. Uh, a lot of challenges and issues come up before the library as things change and new technologies become available, so best of luck with that. And I would also just like to uh, recognize Somal's work. I know she was chairperson of the library board for many years. I enjoyed working with her. I've known her in both a personal capacity as well as with her work on the Board of Trustees. And uh, big shoes to fill. She did a great job for us, and I'm sure you will as well. Tom, this is, this is Andrew Manet. Um, I, I appreciate the, uh, the kind words. I'm really looking forward to being part of the, the board and uh, working with the library and really continuing to bring the, the library into the new technologies and, and really provide value for this community. Great. Thank you, sir. And this is Nancy. I, I want to echo what 
um, Mr. Flynn just said, and, and say thank you so much as an avid reader and someone who recognizes the importance of the library as a center for community um, in so many ways and, and the need to kind of keep on to the old uh, traditional use of the library as someone who loves actual books, <laughs> but also recognizing <laughs> the, the need to go into the, into the new uh, technology space and the use of technology in a great way. Um, I look forward to working with you and, and to, uh, to learning more about what, you, you know, the library has in store for all of us as a community. So thank you very much for, for stepping in. So Phil, what, as Tom said, big shoot. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. And Andrew actually and I uh, have a bit of history because he married <laughs> into one of my favorite Fairfield families of all time, the Matthews. And so I've known his wife since she was a young girl and got to watch her grow up into a lovely young woman and a wonderful mother. And I think Andrew is going to be amazing on this board. I think he's going to bring a lot of excitement and innovation and commitment to our library system. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Brenda. So all in favor of this appointment? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much, Andrew, for stepping up to serve. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, look forward to working with all of you. As We as well. Have, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. Take care. All right. My best to your family. Yeah. Thanks. The next item is item number seven, emergency management director. To hear, consider, and act upon the revision of section uh, hi, uh, in the town of Fairfield, this is blurry because somebody spilled water on it, sorry. Um, emergency contingency plan for elections regarding emergency events at polling locations as recommended by the emergency management director. Uh, Chief McCarthy is on the line to um, speak to any of this. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy, so moved. I'll second it. Chief McCarthy, are you on the line? I am. There were just some minor changes in Section 8A uh, that uh, we reviewed with the registrar, both registrars. We cleaned up the language and submitted it to, to the board for your approval and it'll be part of the ongoing uh, updates to our emergency plans and our emergency operations plan. Is there possible just to, um, is there like a high level, what those small changes are just for the public, or is it just really language? So the, it just, uh, the first sentence uh, describes, uh, and this is the change, describes uh, the safety review that uh, the moderator would conduct uh, before uh, the polling place is open to make sure that all the exits and exit doors are openable and the procedure by which uh, they would report that if they can't remedy the situation, report it to 911 and get direction from the dispatcher who uh, would get uh, further guidance from uh, the appropriate person, either myself, the fire marshal, or someone from the police department. Uh, and that uh, uh, then describe, it goes on to make uh, subtle changes in notifying 911 uh, if there is an emergency at the polling place. It really is just a clarification of that language uh, and it's very minor in nature. Thank you. Chief, can you, it's Tom, uh, nice to talk with you today. Um, can, can you tell me what the process is for reviewing this document? Is this done every year, every two years? Just, I want to get a better understanding because this is actually the first time I've ever gone through this, if you wouldn't mind. So, so the uh, State Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security uh, requires the town of Fairfield or all emergency management towns uh, to update their plans. Uh, we review the plans and submit them, um, and, and typically there are very little in the way of changes, uh, given the fact that this year uh, there was a separate COVID preparedness plan for voting. Um, it caused us to review uh, this plan, which is titled the Town of, Emerg the Town of Fairfield Emergency Contingency Plan for Elections. We found some language that we wanted to clean up, 
uh, and had not noticed that in previous uh, 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 revisions. So um, the, the process is an annual. It is an annual review that is conducted by the deputy chief, um, and we make any changes and submit them to uh, the state office of emergency management. Yeah, that's who at the state level does the does the policy subsequently get reviewed at the state level and approved, and who does that? So each of the regions has a planning officer. So our region is Region 1, um, based in Bridgeport. Robert Kenny is the area coordinator, or regional coordinator. Uh, Chris Ackley is the planning uh, officer. Uh, we submit those plans to him, um, and uh, they get reviewed for content and consens- consistency with the state directives for uh, all emergency plans. And as you can imagine, our emergency plan uh, includes annexes to cover a whole host of uh, different emergencies and response plans. Uh, It's quite a lengthy document, uh, uh, fills up a four-inch binder. Uh, So that process, uh, the the review is done, uh, and, you know, a very large, you know, review is federal guidance, uh, changes, uh, we would have a major overhaul of the plan. That hasn't been done probably for a decade or so. Uh, but uh, individual uh, year-to-year changes are um, reviewed by uh, that person at the regional level, and he sends them up to the state. Matt, I know. Thank you for that. I know you just said that the deputy chief does a bunch of the work on this. Who actually owns this for the town? And is this kind of a plan... Does this sit on the shelf, or are we ready to action this when it comes to election day? So this is um, so this specific plan is um, a responsibility of the registrars. It has to be approved by yep. them. It is an annex to our emergency operations plan, which is owned by the town of Fairfield. The entire plan is owned by the town of Fairfield. Um, and the emergency management director. Um, but uh, this specific uh, plan uh, has to be produced by uh, the registrars with our review and approval. Now, are they on this call now, or did they have any issues with this plan? So, I, I am so, Steve here, Elworthy. Hey, Mr. Elworthy. Yeah, so you can speak to, Steve, you can speak to the process by which uh, those changes were made uh, with the deputy chief. Uh, yes, it was actually quite easy, uh, Mr. Flint. Uh, we um, had to submit an, our emergency plan, and th- this was at the request of the Secretary of State that we send it up with our plan for the safe polls uh, plan as well. And I asked, uh, well, actually, I talked to the Chief about it, and uh, he recommended that I uh, speak to Karen, spoke to Karen. He got right on it changed it. I uh, was able to type it in and with a little bit of computer work to get it to where he wanted and send it back to him for approval. And and um, that was the only thing they found that needed to be updated as of this point, uh, at this point. And other things are replacement of pool of poll workers, absentee poll workers, um, long lines, things of that sort that we plan for. And this particular one is emergency events and preparedness in case there's any dangers like natural disasters or bomb scares or things of that sort. So Got it. It's, uh, well, being, being that it's 2020, you can't take anything for granted this year, so you just want to uh, make sure. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I, I appreciate Please. it. Thanks so much. Thank you. That's Thank all you. the questions I have. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Um are there any more questions? Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, item passes unanimously. Uh, item number eight: Police a chief and fire chief, which require RTM approval. So this is to consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the police chief and fire chief. Resolved that pursuant to 7-339C of the Connecticut General Statutes, the interlocal agreement by and between the Town of Fairfield and the Town of Westport, creating a regional public safety answering point and emergency communication center, 
Fairfield County Dispatch for the purpose of providing dispatch services within Fairfield, Westport, and such other municipalities as may be allowed to join this agreement is hereby approved and further, re further resolved that first, the first select woman be and hereby is authorized on behalf of the town of Fairfield to execute this agreement. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? This is Nancy. I'll move. Okay. I'll second it. Right. All right. Uh, questions, comments. We do have. Uh, uh, we have um, the police chief and Don Smith, the deputy chief, who's been very uh, involved in this process, which has gone on for a very long time, as I know uh, Deputy Chief Don Smith can attest to. Uh, so if you have any questions, they're on the line. Oh, only in as much as we have been talking about this a lot. And what what is it that's specific to what we're agreeing on now as opposed to something we had? I thought we had agreed on this and uh, had voted on this. So this is Don Smith here. Um, first, thanks everybody for all the work to get this to where we are. It has been a very long time. So this is the official agreement um, between Westport and Fairfield that basically codifies all the items we've discussed in the past as far as the costs for the bill, the split, our annual operating costs. Um, it establishes the responsibilities of each municipality involved as well as the control board that will oversee the center once it's up and running that's comprised of the fire and police chiefs from both Fairfield and Westport. Uh, and so and then it outlines some of the legal issues that have to be as far as uh, indemnification, who owns the property in the center, uh, administration, and some dispute resolutions, and then makes it all official so that both municipalities really join as partners in this venture as we move forward and actually start building it. So, um, first of all, Chief Smith, thank you for all the hard work you've done on this. Um, this is Tom Budowak <laughs> and to everybody else for all their work and effort on this. Um, I do have a couple of questions, if I might, Adam, per select one. Proceed. Uh, is, um, is the town attorney on line? I am here. This is Jim Baldwin. Hey, Mr. Baldwin, how are you? Happy Fourth um, of July. Fine, Tom. Um, for you. Good. Um, you and I had spoken about a, a few items relative to this agreement a number of weeks ago um, related to the finance part of the agreement. Are you satisfied with the conclusions reached in this document? And is there anything from a legal perspective with this document? on any of the items that concerns you whatsoever? No, uh, I, I am satisfied with the budget process that uh, is in place and uh, all proverbial kinks that were uh, uh, in the uh, several drafts versions that existed have all been worked out satisfactorily. So is this increase our cost at all, Mr. Baldwin, relative to or our exposure for increased cost? Do you know? Yeah, it's my understanding that this is designed to, to uh, ultimately decrease our cost, but I'm yeah. sure that uh, Deputy Chief Smith can uh, address that better than I can, but that's my understanding. That, that, that's a fair point. It is. I do know that to be true. What I, would, what I guess I, I, I phrased the question inappropriately. Can the Westport take decisions unilaterally that increase the cost to the taxpayers of the town of Fairfield through this agreement? Is it right and a right? Yeah, the, the, the answer is no, unless the issue okay. gets escalated so right beyond the, the control board. There's a control board which is yep. fairly well balanced, and the, the uh, ultimate arbiters of any dispute between yep. the municipalities of Westport and Fairfield are the first select woman and first selectman of uh, each town. And if they're unable to agree, that is, work it out, then uh, there is a um, an arbitration clause. Yeah. And the timing of when this all gets put together and decisions get made work within our annual budget processes, too? Yes. Yeah, we, we put out the timing so that uh, the the budget would have to be presented along our time frame that we currently do now. Okay. Are there any other legal issues or questions, Mr. Baldwin, or concerns or increased exposure by this agreement that you see 
or that concern you in any way? No, all that was worked out through the uh, the indemnification language, which uh, was revised uh, several times to address any of those concerns. The the costs associated with uh, you know workers' compensation insurance and other uh, risk associated with a center like this uh, are all fairly well distributed among the uh, the members and, and uh, equitably distributed. Okay. And my, my last question has to do with um, back to the finances, the funds flow. How does it work? To When do we get paid from Westport? Do we spend the money first and bill Westport? How's this working? So I know that we do bill Westport, and it says, and I'm trying to find the actual clause in here, how often we actually give them a bill um, based right. on formula yeah. but yeah come we have the budget first and we we basically pay the bills weekly and as we get uh, invoices and then we bill Westport on a regular basis as outlined in this agreement uh, that's kind of what I saw as well but does that also include salaries or how does that work do you recall it everything is included and you know part of it is not okay. only salaries but it is also some of the costs not shown in the budget such as administrative costs to town hall yep all of those costs were factored in to the overall yep. bill that they're going to get. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had it right. I thank you. And this You're is, this is a Jim Baldwin again. Uh, we also added a uh, uh, payment within 30 days provision. Otherwise, we're going to ding uh, members for, um, for a late fee, in essence, interest. Right. And, Jim, is this set up so that we could – tack on multiple towns should we go in that direction it is yeah okay that's what i thought thank you so much thank you any other questions or items uh comments seeing none oh uh all in i'm sorry nancy did you have something no i no comment okay uh all in favor Aye. All right. Aye. And the motion passes unanimously. Hopefully Thank you very will, much. This will be it. Uh, Thank you. Chief. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Item you. number nine. Mill Hill School Building oh. Committee. To hear, consider, and authorize the purchase uh, purchasing authority to enter into a partial early Packages guaranteed maximum price number one with Gillibane uh, Building Company for bid package 03A, uh, concrete bid packages 05A, steel and mis miscellaneous metals bid package 26A, electrical bid package 31A, site work for the Mill Hill Elementary School additions and improvement project per bid 2020-85 in the amount not to exceed 7957764 Funding for this contract is available in the Mill Hill Capital Project Fund 254. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, this is not a so move. I'll second, second it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, right. I'll, I'll move it, and Tom, if you want to second it, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, discussion questions. We do have, uh, I believe, Mr. Quinn is on the line, Gerald Foley. We have Mark, um, Katie, we have Sal. We have a whole host of people, so <laughs> fire away. <laughs> Tom Quinn is here. Any questions? Nancy, do you want to go? No, go, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. It's Tom. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy Fourth of July. Thanks for being here. Um, number one, I assume all these contracts have been reviewed by the town attorney, and they're all within propriety per town standards on insurance and everything else, bonds, et cetera. Is that true, Mr. Baldwin? That is correct. And it, am I to understand, did these all go through the appropriate RFP process for the town? And the appropriate bid process is that correct? Yes, it went there was bid an RFP, and, and I'm sure Mr. Foley can address it more specifically. 
that's what I was going to... Mr. Foley, hello. Mr. Foley, can you answer it? Sorry. This I know Tom he was on Tom. mute. Maybe he's on mute. Yeah. Uh, Tom, yeah, this is Tom Quinn here. That's not a good place to go. Well, it's a dead end. Oh. Somebody's in the car. Yeah, sorry about that, it's Gerald Foley. I, I couldn't unmute my phone. Yeah, so what we did is we had the town hired a company called Gilbane. They acted as our, um, basically to facilitate all of the bids that you have before you, with the exception of the one from Best Tech. Uh, best tech me, we're Gerald. doing is excuse me, Gerald. Sorry, excuse yes, me. sorry. A anyone else on the line? Can you please mute your line so it's not so loud we can hear? Thank you. Yeah, I promise. Is someone is someone in the car and not muting your line? Thank you very much. You're very helpful. Tom, is that your line? That is not mine. Is someone is someone not muted? Because there's a lot of background. All right, proceed, Mr. Foley. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I couldn't unmute my phone, so that's why it was that that big delay. Um, yeah, so we had a company called Gilbane Building, which is the one that's creating the GMP for the town. They went out to bid for all of the bid packages. We have four packages before you. This is what we refer to as the early bid packages. So those were all uh, uh, publicly bid. Uh, we've got four companies that are being presented. They've all been vetted. Uh, we'll have performance bonds in place from all four companies. Uh, insurance are up to stuff with all four companies. The one um, outlier is the company called Best Tech of Connecticut. They're providing a bid package for uh, demolition and abatement. And the, the the town, at the advice of the, it's the Office of School Construction Grants and Reimbursement, they recommended uh, or strongly suggested to the town that we utilize a, um, a state contract for that component. Normally we bid that separately anyway. It's not something we would put with Gilbane. So at the advice of the um, Office of School Construction Grants and Reimbursement, OSCAR for short, uh, we're utilizing a state contract for that one component. And that's that company, Best Tech of Connecticut. And we will have insurance in place with that company, and we'll also have a bond in place for that company. Now, since we do with the state on reimbursement, you're comfortable that the company that's managing all these processes are following the appropriate policies and procedures that will allow us to get reimbursement from the state? Yes. So what I do is I'm I'm kind of the check and balance with them. So I just make yep. sure that everything they're doing is in compliance. And so far we're we're up to date with all of them. So we we should be good with all the ones that Gilbane's doing. Okay. So from the legal and performance bonds and insurance perspective, we're covered. Yes. Okay. Next question: Have any of these bids come back? as a surprise financially that would cause us to have any budget pressure at the present time on the project? Uh, no, all of the bids that came back were under budget. By how much are they under budget? Rough numbers, you don't need to give me specific. Um, I have, it's, bear with, bear with you one second, I just, I just had it. Thank you, sir. Yep. So what we have is you're only seeing a small component of the projects yep. that are actually out to bid. So right now we are, let's see here, we're probably, we're tracking to the good of only about six, about $60,000. So it's not a, a huge, but at least we're, we're less than what, you know, we're less than the budget. Right. That is good news. From a time frame perspective, are we on time with this? Are we falling behind because of everything well, going on? We're actually a little further behind than we wanted to be. Uh, but what, the idea with the today's packages is, is to kind of push us a little further forward. So the intent with today was is to get these packages on contract so that we could move the process forward. 
um, and we're still tra- targeting that it'll be by the end of 2021 uh, to have the project complete. Um, and then there's, I think there's a small package that takes us into 2022. But, but in all honesty, yeah, we're a little further behind than we would have liked to have been. But um, we're not so far. It's, it's not adversely affecting the budget. Thank you so much. I appreciate the information. That's all I have right now. I appreciate it, gentlemen. I have no additional questions. Okay. All right. So this, this, uh, is, this is Attorney Baldwin. Just uh, I want to inform the Board of Selectmen that there are. Uh, a couple of terms in the agreement that uh, are still being worked out, but I don't consider it to be, you know, material to the uh, the board's uh, vote today. In terms of uh, it, the document, the final agreement will not be signed until it meets the, um, you know, the satisfaction of the uh, the first select woman, uh, and in particular myself. Mr. Baldwin, could you give us a brief overview of what those terms are? Uh, it was, uh, I was ensuring that the RFP is incorporated by reference into the agreement. This is actually an amendment to a prior agreement, and uh, and they're getting back to me on that if there are any discrepancies caused by the original agreement and, and that RFP, then we need to flesh those out. But uh, again, nothing that can't be uh, worked out. Uh, and the other aspect has to do with the fact that um, uh, they had a, a COVID clause, for lack of a better uh, term, which to me was nothing uh, more than a, a, a glorified force majeure uh, clause. But uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that they didn't have anything more than the current force majeure uh, terms or, or uh, powers or, or authority uh, than what is already in there. And again, they're getting back to me on those those two points. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that all? That's Any other it. questions? Okay. All right. All in favor of item number nine? Aye. Aye. Nancy? Yep, I, I, I think we talked okay, over Okay, I'm sorry. Yep, I didn't hear Okay, item passes unanimously. Item number 10, Mill Hill School Building Committee to hear, consider, and authorize the purchasing authority to enter into a proposed contract with Vesta Tech Incorporated of Connecticut for the demolition and abatement portion of the Mill Hill Elementary School Additions and Improvement Project per State of Connecticut DAS Contract Award 16 PSX 0110 in the amount not to exceed 801734 with the additional authority to execute change orders to said contract in the amount not to exceed 80173 combined total amount not to exceed 881907 Funding for this contract is available in the Capital uh, Mill Hill Capital Project Fund 254. Do I have a motion to approve? Nancy, so moved. Tom? Yes. Seconded. Um, we have on the line uh, Tom Quinn, Gerald Foley. We have Mark Schweitzer. Uh, and Kate Hurley from Gilbane and Sal Morbido um, to answer any questions. We also have uh, Principal Kevin Chase and the Mill Hill Building Committee Vice Chairman uh, Jason Lee and Melanie Ruggiero on the line. Any questions? This is Tom. Yeah, this is Tom. Just the same questions I had on the last contract uh, apply for this, and I guess. Mr. Foley, this is the one you referred to in your earlier comments, correct? Yes. Yes. So this, so this one, uh, so this one, we're slightly more than the, the what we had estimated for the budget. So we're uh, on this particular package, where uh, we had estimated that it would be um, 
let's see here, uh, like approximately 450,000, but one of the, compo the demolition component came in at 465, so we're a little more than the budget, so we're 16,000 more. Um, then the hazard abatement, hazard material abatement, we had projected it would be approximately um, 353,000, but the bids on this one came in substantially higher. So for these two packages combined, we're approximately um, $160,000. We basically, for all intents and purposes, we'll say over budget, but we're not over budget. But for based on our budget, we're we're a little over budget than what we had thought. But that amount is is well within our contingency. So we budget, budgeted for this particular package. There's a series of packages. We have 1.1 million in contingency. So that's easily absorbed by that amount. Okay, so let me let me regurgitate what I think I just heard you say. Okay. On a line item basis, these two line items combined have us over budget by a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Correct. Now that's partially offset by the $60,000 that you referred to on the original contracts Correct. that we just approved and discussed. Correct. So that, would, so that would mean globally, without taking into consideration the contingency, we're over budget by $100,000 net. That's correct. Okay. That $100,000 would then get applied against a contingency that currently sits at $1.1 million? That's correct. So that our net contingency is a million dollars as we sit here today if we approve these contracts? That's correct. Last question on that. Part of that contingency was specific for this abatement because if I recall, Mr. Quinn, you could help with this. This is the riskiest area of the project, no? given the, the uncertainty once you open the walls and things, or am I mistaken? Yeah, it's a, it, I could answer while Tom's logging on. Yeah, this is typically for anything you do with the, the hazard materials, there is always a higher risk. Um, and so so to answer your question, yeah, this, this particular component is probably a more risky one than your other components. Mr. Foley, does the risk still continue after we approve this contract because they get in there and don't know what they're going to find? Yes, the risk still would continue, correct. Okay, so this doesn't mitigate the risk. It just says we're out of the box over correct. by 100 with additional correct. risk to go on this same type of item. That's correct. And, and this was the one that went through the state process not the normal quote unquote bid process. Correct. And that's I think that's kind of why the state led us this direction. And and this particular company that they recommended, uh they, they came highly recommended to the state uh, and they've done very well at other for other municipalities. And I think that's why they led them led us to pick this firm because of their expertise in this particular area. Okay. And when you say they've done very well, they've done very well at mitigating costs. They've Mitig done correct. very well. I'm at sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mitigating yeah. costs. Correct. Yes. Okay. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Any other questions? No. 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 Okay. Thank you. Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. Welcome. Item number 11, to consider and act upon tax refunds as recommended by the tax collector in the amount of 71787 Motion to approve. I'll, I'll move. I'll move. Nancy. Second it. Any discussion or questions? Seeing nope. none. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, item number 12 is to hear and consider and act upon any other business that shall properly come before this meeting, which I don't think there is any. Um, and the final item is to give an update, um, a COVID in town update. So uh, we just got uh, uh, noticed uh, while we were on this meeting that Governor Lamont uh, has delayed the phase three reopening. Um, and everything that goes along with that, which um, is going to now uh, kind of throw a monkey wrench into some of the stuff we've been working on and things that we've been planning for. Uh, so that's um, new. Um, <clears throat> Friday's meeting, uh, I have s scheduled a meeting well, to have the school administrators come in, school administration come in and meet for a preliminary meeting with our emergency management team to just start the discussion of planning uh, how and what uh, they're looking at based on the reopening, uh, school reopening report that the governor sent down uh, a little over a week or so ago. And so I just wanted to have those early discussions with them because I'm assuming it's going to be um, a lot of meetings that are going to be required to go through that report and that planning document with our team to figure out how we can be helpful to the school administration um, and see how we are going to be able to rope, reopen our schools within the guidelines and that are safe. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'll have more information as we go. Um, I, I want to say I'm a little disappointed in the news about the governors uh, just canceling the phase three reopening without really any explanation as to why because Connecticut is number one um, and, and is reporting the lowest uh, uh, rates of infection. So I'm concerned about that in a way because there are so many businesses that have been waiting to reopen in the phase three section of this. And so that is going to be a bit of a problem, I think. Um, and I'm hoping to you know, reach out to the governor and access additional information about why he determined that decision. Um, and then I will provide that uh, whatever information I get in the weekly newsletter. Um, other than that, um, town hall has been open. Uh, we have ha all of our staff has been back for um, now. This is a, a little over a week now. Um, people are not working remotely anymore. Everyone is here. We do still have access only by appointment to the public and that is for the safety of everyone in, involved, and it's been working very well, um, and everything is chugging along. Our building department is doing extraordinarily well. Uh, members of our com uh, community have been very excited about redoing their homes or backyards, uh, maybe because they haven't been able to travel, and so uh, our building permits are up, and um, reports from the Fairfield County Board of Realtors is that real estate uh, is moving like crazy and bidding wars are happening all over town and home uh, it's a seller's market so to speak and if, I'm not sure if you read an article that was uh, recently posted maybe about a week ago that said over 10,000 New Yorkers have moved into Connecticut and so uh, that is good for Connecticut uh, I'm excited about the prospect of Greenfield Hill being reignited uh, in the marketplace and that houses are now selling uh, even above asking price when that was sort of um, a, a, a market that we were somewhat concerned about when the reevaluation began. So I'm excited to, uh, in, in, with the prospect of having those new sales and that re-energize um, interest in Greenfield Hill uh, and other parts of our town as well to uh, toward our reevaluation and um, I'm excited about that. Um, and I'll just open it up to any questions. Um, thank you, Brenda. I just want to say I know it's it's obviously disappointing and, and without having too much information about what the governor has just sent down to us. Mm -hmm. um, I can only say on the flip side, and I'm not undermining the businesses, and obviously that's going to be, you know, continuing to be devastating for those business owners. Um, and so I, I don't by any means want to undermine that or belittle that, but I will say seeing how well Connecticut is doing, um, 
and then reading the news about where some of the other states are. Um, it's at least encouraging from a health perspective that we are doing so well. And, you know, that's encouraging. So as much as there's, you know, bad news, I just also want to say, like, the good news is we have done so well. So um, I want to just point that out. And also to say, um, you know, as you're saying, the, the good news about Greenfield Hill and, you know, it's just always a case of careful what you wish for, because I don't think any of us would have hoped that the market would have changed for this reason. But given that it has, um, you know, it, it is encouraging to see in, in my neighborhood some of these four sales lines going down. So just wanted to uh, to make that comment. It is. It's, and thank uh, you for everything that the, the emergency management team continues to do to uh, to keep us all healthy and informed and safe. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dan. Hey, Brenda, did the mm -hmm. governor say, is it just an indefinite delay, or did he give a date, sir? No, he hasn't given really any information. And when, we have to could wait you remind me, yeah, when was the reopen date for phase three? July 20th. That's what I thought. So, and it's, it's past that. He didn't say this is going to impact the schools at all, though. He hasn't changed anything on that? He hasn't, but part of that was expanding the amount of people who could be inside and outside. So, you know, right now we're at 25 inside and 100 outside, and it was supposed to kick up a little. Um, right. You know, I mean, obviously, listen, I'm not going to make assumptions about what when it's very little bit information, but, again, it could have been done in, a, I think, a, a reasonable way to allow some more of these businesses to open a little bit more. Um, but again, we'll wait and see what the governor, we, we're doing really well as Nancy pointed out. We are not South Carolina, we're not other states. Um, and I, I think all the work that most of us have done, in each of our towns, our emergency management teams across our state, as well as the emergency management team in the state of Connecticut, I think could have handled this. And I'm looking forward to hearing more information about what the governor is planning. But again, um, you know, we have to we have to be safe, but we also have to live, and we have to, our economy is not doing great in Connecticut, and hasn't been for some time. So I'm I'm curious to hear what he has to say, and I look forward to hearing it, and I will share whatever information I do find out um, through the newsletter, so that everyone can have that. Thank you. What um, and now we've just passed the end of the fiscal year, and I know the team's working on it. Do you have any? Got instinct right now as to where we're going to come out versus budget for the year end, or can we get that for our next meeting uh, relative to the last um, projections we had gotten, please? Yeah, we, we'll we'll try to get that for the next meeting. Okay. And what about the revaluation work? Has that been delayed because of the COVID? No, you it's been it up ongoing. Now? It's been ongoing. They're still doing it. And it's on track and on pace. Yep. Okay. Okay. I actually spoke to the, the contractor recently, and everything's going yeah. along. Yeah, well, I share your hope that some of this um, revitalization and interest in coming? Connecticut and uh, Greenfield Hill you coming? Um, stays. Yeah, me too. I, I think it's very good news. It's positive news in an otherwise very unpositive time. Any other questions? So, sorry, Brent. Is there any update on any of the fill pile continuing remediation efforts or anything like that that um, we can discuss? Well, not really. Um, well, I'm uh, I'm working with the environmental attorney. I did reach out to the commissioner of DEEP last week, and I'm going to make another phone call. I would want to go up and have a meeting with her right. and our environmental attorney to discuss some items, um, and I'm still waiting for that to happen. Uh, I'm going to try again today to get on the phone with them and leave another message, and hopefully we'll be able to connect. And if right. I'll, I hope they'll have some additional information after I have that meeting. 
right. Thank you for that. Okay. That's all the questions I have for right now. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Nancy, do you have anything more? Nancy? Okay, I think. Just okay. Th thanks again to you and the emergency management team. Thank you, Nancy. They're, they're awesome. They're really amazing people. We're very lucky to have them. And we are, and, you know, it's not lost on me when I do look at those numbers in other places, um, just how hard this, this team has worked and uh, to, to keep us, again, all healthy and safe. So I want to just echo that thanks. Absolutely. And so uh, I do want to give one other little update. Um, we had uh, opened up our beach passes uh, to out-of-towners, um, day passes up to 100, and we weren't filling our lots and things were going well. People were socially distancing. We were keep monitoring it closely. But then on Thursday before the holiday weekend, we were out over to pass. We upped it a little bit to let more day passes and then it got too crowded. So we pulled back um, quickly on Friday and ma maintained a lower percentage of day passes and monitored the lot. We, we reduced the amount in the lot as well at Jennings and it was fine from what I heard and the reports over the weekend. Uh, people, you know, people are still emailing and complaining that, you know, they're seeing too many groups of people. Over the weekend, I received a uh, email from someone who was very upset that there was like 30 kids walking down her street, um, all together teenagers, you know, obviously no masks uh, close together, and that she was frustrated uh, about that. I uh, shared the email without the person's name who wanted to remain anonymous with Mike Cummings and our health director and asked if they could put something together for Mike to send out to parents to remind them it was really important that they remind their children uh, that, you know, the more, um, the more people who aren't interacting, you know, who are not following the rules could potentially tip the scales and not allow us to open schools in the fall. So. They quickly turned that around, uh, and Mike Cummings did send it out, which we really did appreciate uh, to all the parents. And um, we're, we're having some parking issues that we're trying to resolve, and, uh, but our, our, our law enforcement are issuing tickets quite a bit. So we had 190 parking tickets issued uh, this week, weekend over the holiday weekend, people parking in permitted parking spaces without a permit. And I also uh, worked on an agreement with Bob's and they're allowing us to have the signs there. If you go by there, you'll see it now. It says not, um, no beach parking allowed. And they've also allowed us to have a, um, either a special or a regular officer, depending on what we can do, uh, there to control that parking that's been happening and that people are complaining about. Thank you. Okay, well, have a good night, and I'm going to say, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. <laughs> okay, all, all in favor. favor. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Aye, thank you. Aye. Good night, everybody. Take care. Take care now.